This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Every photographer wants to create great images straight out of camera, right? Images so thoughtfully composed and executed that little if anything needs to be done after the fact. A little bit of saturation, maybe a little bit of contrast, but not much else. Now for me, because I primarily do landscape photography, a perfect in-camera image is one that has you know, really good light, uh, hopefully good weather, good atmosphere, and you know, if I did my job right, hopefully a good composition as well. And whenever I get an image like that, which doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it is one of the most satisfying, one of the most rewarding feelings that I could ever ask for. It is the reason to keep going out there, to keep shooting, to keep trying to you know, create better, more compelling, more beautiful images because of that feeling, because of how good it is, um, how good that feeling is to just, you know, get a really solid image straight out of the camera. And I think part of the reason why I'm always trying to, you know, create the best possible image in camera, and I assume other people probably feel, you know, the same way, is because there's, there's like a certain, um, like a certain sacredness and a certain, um, like purity and honesty. I don't mean to get too philosophical about it, but there is something to that. There is something, um, there is something more honest, I think, about creating images mostly in camera. Like that to me has always felt more authentic. And I just find that to be more um, fulfilling creatively compared to, you know, sitting in a chair for hours and hours at a time, adding layers and layers and layers of edits in Photoshop when I could have worked to, you know, get the image right in camera. And to be completely honest with you, like I have some weird hangups about editing images in general. I mean, even though I very much enjoy it, even though I get a lot out of it and I make videos about it and I, you know, fully respect the artistry and the craft and the technical skill that goes into, you know, creating a beautiful digital image. There's oftentimes something in the back of my mind that's like nagging at me, like something, you know, something lingering back there that's telling me that the reason why I, I am making so many edits and the reason why I'm spending so much time making these changes to an image is because I need to cover up my mistakes. Like I'm, you know, making up for my, you know, apparent lack of skill and talent using a camera um, by fixing whatever I got wrong when that image was originally captured. And, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this and I've been questioning, you know, why it is that I feel that way? You know, why, you know, why that voice comes around and starts nagging me and telling me those things. I think part of the reason why is because I appreciate, you know, like truth and honesty and authenticity in photography, in the images that I am creating, because those are all values that I appreciate in my everyday life. I mean, they may not be important to everyone, but they are important to me and they are important to me in everything I do. So I just appreciate those same values and I strive for those same values in the in the landscape images that I create as well. And I know I'm not alone here because there is such a thing, in case you didn't know, there is such a thing as the Natural Landscape Photography Awards, which is a competition that highlights natural, uh, realistic landscape images, images that were created almost entirely in camera with minimal edits thereafter. By the way, they just recently came out with their 2023 award-winning images, and they're all worth checking out when you have time. And I think these awards are a great idea because not only do they celebrate great photography, but also the photographers who put in the effort. I mean, I don't know how many people really think about this, but you know, creating beautiful, natural images in camera takes time, it takes effort, it takes skill, it takes, um, you know, yes, sometimes a bit of luck too. But it that takes more effort, I think, than, you know, taking an average image and then editing it and processing it. I also think these awards promote the right principles for they encourage people to you know, spend more time, you know, getting their images right in camera and spend more time there as opposed to spending more time learning new tricks, learning new editing tricks, learning new things in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever, which I am just as guilty of as anyone. Like, you know, uh, I do that all the time. I make videos on that topic. So I, yeah, I have a tendency to kind of, you know, lean in that direction. I'm always on the hunt for something new and some new way of editing something and some new, you know, some new method, whatever, you know, because I'm fascinated by it and I find it to be interesting. But yeah, when it, when you really get down to it, uh, time would be better spent 
getting it right in camera. But, and I bet you sense that there was a buck coming, right? There is one thing. There's one thing about all this that, that gives me pause, that makes me step back for a moment and just think, wait, maybe I've got this all wrong. Perhaps truth and authenticity aren't what's truly important. And we're gonna dive into that in just a moment. But first, I need to tell you about the sponsor of this video, which is Squarespace. Whether you are publishing a new portfolio of your photography, starting a small business, or launching a new creative project, you will need a website. And Squarespace makes publishing websites a breeze with beautifully designed clean templates that look great, domain registration, email newsletters, and even e-commerce tools to help you sell your own prints, eBooks, and other digital goods. I especially like how easy it is to upload and organize images and how just about everything with Squarespace is customizable. Oh, and Squarespace websites also look great on mobile. Try Squarespace for 30 days absolutely free by heading over to squarespace.com slash Domini. And whenever you're ready to publish, use promo code Domini to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. By now, I imagine most people, including you, are familiar with filmmaker Werner Herzog. Even if you don't recognize his name, odds are you've heard his voice. This did not fit into his sentimentalized view that everything out there was good and the universe in balance and in harmony. Herzog works mostly in the documentary genre, including films like uh, Grizzly Man, um, Lessons of Darkness, The Fire Within, and many more. He is highly prolific. He seems to come out with a new film every year. Speaking of, I actually recently stumbled across one of his documentaries that I'd, I'd never heard of, and it was on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's called Happy People, A Year in the Taiga. I just got completely sucked into it. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was really, really worth watching. So if interested, uh, definitely check that out. Herzog creates documentaries, but his documentaries look and feel like no other documentary. Like there's always something really unique about his, and it's not just his voice. It's not just his narration. And people have asked him about this and through interviews, and he actually recently pu published a, a book where he talks about his form of documentary filmmaking. What he says is that when he makes a documentary film, he avoids absolute realism. What Herzog strives for instead is something he calls ecstatic truth. We must ask of reality, how important is it really? How important really is the factual? Of course, we can't disregard the factual. It has normative power, but it can never give us the kind of illumination, the ecstatic flash from which truth emerges. Ecstatic truth is mysterious and elusive and can be reached only through fabrication and imagination and stylization. Herzog is a documentary filmmaker, but he's really a director and storyteller who, uh, who injects his own creative viewpoint into the factual, into the, into the reality of whatever it is that he's documenting to reveal a truth <laughs> that the camera cannot see. I am fascinated by this. I think this is so interesting because, you know, not simply because Herzog himself is such a character and because, uh, and because his films are, are oftentimes, you know, fantastic, but I'm also just fascinated by how he articulates and explains his style of filmmaking and how he defines truth when working in a documentary genre. I think another way to think about this and another way to, you know, um, to frame what it is and define what it is that Herzog is saying when he talks about the ecstatic truth, when he, you know, what exactly does that mean? I think another way to think about it is the classic mathematical paradox of one plus one equals three, which on paper, you know, doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make mathematical sense. Like, you know, my kids, you know, would look at that and say, well, clearly that's wrong. And of course it is wrong, but there's something about it that I think we all understand, right? I mean, there's something in there that we all, you know, kind of like nod our heads at and say, yeah, you know, sometimes that's actually, that's actually true because it represents in a very, I think, uh, clear and artful way, the, the emergence of something new and exciting that, can happen when two things are combined 
together. That sometimes happens. Doesn't always happen. Sometimes one plus one truly does equal two. And I think the three is that illumination. It is that that ecstatic truth. It is that that thing that Herzog is talking about when he when he is describing his films and what his goal what his goals are when he is creating documentary films. The camera cannot do it by itself, so something more has to be there. Because I know for me, and and with my own work and the in the landscape images that I try to create, I get rather hung up on this topic. I get rather hung up on on the topic of what is authentic and what is real and what is not. I don't know about you, but you know, I don't want and, and I talked about this earlier in this video. I don't want to be perceived or seen as a dishonest or or deceitful uh, person. And I think that's why I have that that voice in the back of my head that I was talking about, that thing that happens when I'm you know sitting over there and I'm spending a lot of time editing images. After a bit, like I start to feel like almost like a like a sense of like guilt or even like shame for what it is that I'm doing, changing the hues of the image and I'm changing the light and I'm uh, dodging and burning and I'm doing a bunch of different stuff. Anyway, I think I'm always going to have this worry. Like I think I'm always going to worry about you know, these questions of authenticity and realism and manipulation and how much manipulation is, is too much and whether I'm doing too much, you know, and whether I'm doing too much to an image after the fact. If I just, you know, take a step back and think for a second about what it is that I'm doing, why I'm going out into the world, why I'm traveling to particular places, why I I feel this, this drive and this need to go and, and do it. I'm not creating images, you know, for like scientific or, or research purposes, right? I, I doubt many of us are, are doing that. That is a thing unto itself. It is an important thing unto itself, of course, but that is not my goal. Like that is not what I'm doing. I think that I am going out and making the effort and creating images because there is something about a particular place or a particular landscape or a particular subject that, that resonates with me, you know, that makes me want to get on a plane and go to that place and try my best to create the best possible images that that I'm capable of creating. But I shouldn't feel guilty um, or like I'm being, you know, dishonest or deceitful or whatever if I change a photograph thereafter. Like I shouldn't feel bad about that if that change is in service to a, a a greater purpose, if it is to achieve a particular goal, a particular creative intent, when there is an opportunity to create a more engaging image uh, through, well, in the words of Herzog from earlier, fabrication, imagination, and stylization. You know, I think people get so hung up on you know questions of, am I over editing my images? Am I doing too much, etc. Well, I think the opposite can happen too. I think sometimes people don't edit their images enough. I think sometimes I know I feel like I've done this. I feel like I have, uh, I have, you know, purposely tried to keep as much as of myself out of the images as I possibly can so that they are more realistic, so that they are more truthful and honest when what they really needed was more of my creative input, not less. So those are my thoughts, um, but I would love to hear from you. I would love to know what you think. I would love to know if you have faced uh, similar challenges, if you have uh, had these same feelings when you sit down to, to edit images, or, or is it just me? I would love to know. Uh, leave a comment down below if you would care to share. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I appreciate the support. And speaking of going out in the world and creating images, I'm actually about to hit the road. I'm, I'm currently packing and I'm going to be going out and uh, creating some new uh, images and some new videos as well. So if you've never been to my channel before, remember to subscribe down below if you'd like to keep in touch with me in the future. And if you enjoyed this video, if it was uh, if it was an entertaining rant, uh, please uh, take a moment and give this video a thumbs up down below. That's it, everyone. Thanks so much. See you next time.